Hi folks, so in this video today we're going to go over the 2023 exam paper higher level question from the DCG and it was the question B2 here based on the topic of um, intersecting planes. So it says here, the image on uh, B2, the image on the right shows the Glass House Hotel in County Sligo. The hotel includes a series of planar glass surfaces. Figure B2 shows the plan and elevation of two intersecting planar surfaces A, B, C, D and B, C, E, F, part A, Draw the given plan and elevation of the intersecting planes uh, A, B, C, D, and B, C, E, F. Okay, so that's the one we're going to focus on first. So we've got the elevation view here on the XY line, and we've got the plan view down here as well. And you can see from the elevation, D, C, and E are all on the ground on the two surfaces, A, B, C, D, and B, C, E, F. Uh, they're them three points on the ground. A is at a height of 60, F is at a height of 50, and B is an additional 35, so 85 up on the ground. In the plan view, they kind of give us a start point here. We're going to have to go down at 25 degrees and measure a distance of 55 to find F and E. And then from there, perpendicular to that line, we're going to go down 50 and then another 30 to find C and B. And from C, then we can do an angle of 75 degrees to find D. And they don't tell us A, but, oh yeah, up here in elevation, they give us the edge AD and BC are parallel to one another. So we'll probably have to come back up to the elevation to find A first before we find it in the plan. Okay, so that's what we're going to focus on there first. So, um, starting off there, all we're going to do is we're going to start off with the next Y line, roughly in the middle of our page. It's just based on the size. I'm going to do it a little bit to the right of it. Okay, just around there. And what I'm going to do is, that's my X, Y line. So I'll just put that in heavy. Obviously, on the day of an exam, you won't be using markers. It's just for demonstration purposes. So there's my X, Y line. Now, for the plan view, start a line here below the X, Y line. And on that line, I'm going to pick a point about there. And using that point, I'm going to measure an angle of 25 degrees upside down. Just making sure I've done this correctly. Be 100% on the money, so around there, 25 degrees. Make a little mark there. Happy with that. From that mark, I'm going to draw in my angle of 25 degrees. So there's my angle of 25 degrees. Just check that again. Yep, happy with that. Okay, now perpendicular to that, I'm going to measure 50, sorry, 55 millimeters first and then perpendicular. So from that point there, I'm going to measure a distance of 55 millimeters right to there. Happy with that. And now get in my set square. Put the number side on it. Slide it along. Give me a perpendicular line there. So the exact same over here. Okay, so I've got those two lines. Now I'm going to measure down distances of 50 millimeters from this point here. And an additional 30 millimeters. Okay, I found a series of points there. I can label them now. This point right here is F and E, as they've labeled it on the sheet. This point here is C. And this point here is B, not D. So there's B and C. Okay. Um, while I'm at it, I'm going to heavy those in. Just make sure I have C found again. So C. Just check that, that that's 50. Yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, now using my protractor from C, I'm going to go at 75 degrees. So from C. Seventy-five degrees around. So there's the seventy-five. Project it across. I can then find D over here. And once again, heavy that in. All right. So there's B C 
B, C, F, E, and D all found. Now I can find them in the elevation. So by simply projecting them up, marking up their various heights. So D is on the ground, C and E are on the ground. So bring D up. That's where D will be. C is on the ground. And E, but there's a height up there for that one. And obviously B as well. Okay. Now the height for F is up 50 millimeters, so I'm just going to measure from the 10 up as far as 15. And then the height for B is up 85. 10 up to 18.5. There we go. Once again, labeling in my points. So there's D. Um, B is up here. I've got F. I've got E. And I've got C. See the lower line of scratch. Okay, now I'm going to connect those up. So B connects to C, B connects to F, and simply draw those in with the marker now. Okay. Now I've got that kind of planar surface there as well. And the one that I'm missing is point A. Now, how do we find point A? Well, first of all, they tell us that the line BC and the line AD are parallel to one another. So that's helpful. And I have the point D, so I can go parallel to that line. And they also tell us then that A is at a height of 60. So if I measure up 60, where it cuts through, it should help me find the exact point for A. So first things first, from the XY line, I'm going to mark up 60 millimeters. 16. Now that I've done that, just do a light little horizontal line there and parallel to the edge BC. Parallel to that line. And do it from this way. There is my line. I've now found point A. Connect A up to B. Okay, so now that I found A in elevation, I can find A in the plan by simply dropping it down. So A in our plan view will be down here. And we know A connects to B. And A connects to D. Okay, there we have first part of the question done. Draw the elevation plan of the given points. We've done that. Our two planar surfaces, A, B, C, D in elevation, B, C, E, F in elevation. And I can see A, B, C, D in plan and B, C, E, F in plan. Now, uh, just to kind of get our head around it here, uh, we can see that A and B, if we just focus on the surface A, B, C, D, A and B are the top two points and C, D are the bottom two points. They're both on the ground. Okay. Um, I've also got the surface B, F, E, A, or how do I say it, B, C, E, F. Now, B and F are the top two points, okay, and C and E are on the ground. But that surface in the plan view, I'm seeing B, C, E, F as an, ed, in a, as an edge view in the plan. Okay, um, now what we're going to do is move on to the second part of the question. Determine the dihedral angle between the planes A, B, C, D and B, C, E, F. Okay, the dihedral angle. I uh, essentially want to get the angle between the two surfaces, between those two surfaces, A, B, C, D, and B, C, E, F, the angle between them. And the only way I can do that is when I see those two surfaces as edge views. Okay, first of all, I need to find the common line, or what's known as the line of intersection between those views. And the line of intersection is the line B, C. That is the common line. Okay, that's the first thing I do. Step two, I need to find that line as a true length. So, is it a true length at the moment in elevation or plan? It's not. The reason being is because... In the elevation view, it's not a true length because the line BC in plan is not parallel with the XY line. Okay. Likewise, in plan, it is not a true length because in elevation, it is not parallel to the XY line. So that's step number two. We have to find that line as a true length. Now, on the surface then, we're also going to take other points. Now, I'm not going to take this. Both surfaces have four points. I'm only going to take three from each surface. Obviously, the line BC, uh, which is common to both of them. But then I'm actually going to leave out A and F. And the reason being is because it's just going to eliminate a little bit of work that I have to do. Instead of having to find 
four points on each surface, I'm just going to find three. So I'm going to imagine I'm making a triangle from B, C, D. Okay, because that's still on the same surface. And B, C, E, because that is also still on the same surface. Okay, so I'm going to find the true length of the line B, C. And the only way I can do that is by looking perpendicular to it. So I'm going to set up an X1, Y1 par parallel with the, with the B, C edge here and project out perpendicular to it. So setting up an X1, Y1 parallel with that line there. I'll come out to about here. That is my X1, Y1. I will now project out those points perpendicular to it. So as I said, the points I'm taking are BCD and BCE. So there's B. It's at a certain height out. C. D. And E. Okay. Now, if I project from the plan, I take my heights from the elevation. Now, what's helpful here is the points, and the reason I chose these ones is because D, C, and E are already all on the ground. Okay, so if I want to find those, and I want to find D, as it projects out, it has no height because it's sitting on the ground, so this is just another auxiliary elevation, so there is D1, I'm going to call it. Okay, now I want to find C. There's C1 and E. There is E1. The only point that has a height is point B, which has a height of 85 millimeters sitting above the XY line. So I'm going to take the height up to B there. Mark it from B out. And that there is the height for B1. Now, I have to draw on those surfaces. So I've got the surfaces I said BCD. So B to C, which is the line of intersection. That now is the true length of that line. I've got the BCD one. Now I've also got the surface BCE, BCE. Now which one do I see just in regards to having these incorrectly? As I'm looking in this direction, I can see the face BCE before I can see the face BCD. Okay, so that's the face I'm going to heavy in. So B to C to E. Let's heavy that in fully. And then a face behind it, B to C to D. That would be my hidden detail face. Okay, but what's most important there is that the line BC is a true length. Okay, so we've now got the true length. We've now got the true length of the line BC. And that is the line of intersection. Now, if we look along that true length, we will see it as a point view. But more importantly, we'll see the two surfaces that it's on as edge views. Okay, therefore giving us the dihedral angle. So now we're going to set up another XY line, an X2, Y2. And we're going to be looking along that true length line. So we'll see it as a point view. So I'm going to have to set up an X2, Y2 perpendicular to that line there. Hopefully it just about fits on my page. I'm going to keep this all quite close. About to there. That there is going to be my I'm going to just call that X2, Y2. I'm going to project out everything perpendicular to that. So B and C. I've also got D. And I've also got E. And the rule of thumb here then is you take your distances from the previous x, y line back. So in this case, the x1, y1 back to those points. So if I want to find those points, well, first of all, b and c, if I go back and I want to find the distance from c, so from the x1, y1 back to c, what you'll notice is that that distance there, let's mark it properly now, that distance from there to there is the same as the distance from the x1, y1 back to b. And what's helpful about that then is I project it out, I will see the points b, c, as an edge view. So that's the common point there. So that there now, that point right there is going to be called B2, comma, C2. I'm seeing those two points in the same position. Now, the other distances I need to take are the distances back to the points uh, D and E respectively. So I'm going to take the distance back to D. 
set distance there, the X1, Y1 back to D. I'm going to mark it out along this line. I'll label it in a second. And I'm also going to take the distance back to E, which actually was the same as B and C as well. Stack distance there. Mark it out from E. There we go. So that there is going to be, call it D2 and E2. And very quickly draw that in. And what I'm now seeing is those two surfaces, BCE, BCD, as edge views. And I should say A, B, C, D, and B, C, E, F, but I only took three points. So what we have inside there now, in that little gap inside there, is our dihedral angle. Okay, so let's put in a little arrow in there. That is our dihedral angle. Now, if you wanted to come along, I say if you wanted, you should always do this on the day of an exam. You would measure that then. And for me there, I'm just going to read the angle as best I can there. And for me, it's saying, if I read it around 75, looks like 76 degrees. Okay, that's what it's saying to me. So the dihedral angle between the surfaces seems to be 76 degrees. Okay, so that's the second part of the question done. Determine the dihedral angle between the planes A, B, C, D, and B, C, E, F. And as I said previously, I left out A, so it was like I did B, C, D, and B, C, E. Okay, just left out A and F, just to make my life a little bit easier. Right, um, part C. P, okay, so they're saying here, P is a point on the edge B, C, which is located at a true distance of 55 millimeters from point B. Okay, part one, draw the given plan and elevation of the line DP, so the line D top P, so we have to find P, and then part two, determine and indicate the true length of DP. Okay, so draw the plan and elevation of the line DP. P is a point on the edge BC. Okay, so do we have the edge BC, which is located at a true distance? Okay, so that word's important there. Do we have the edge BC? Yes, we've already found here that was a true length. I've already indicated that. And they're telling us P is a point on this edge, which is located 55 millimeters from B. Okay, so all I'm going to do here is I'm going to get 55 millimeters along the edge BC. So from B here, where I see the line is a true length, I'm going to measure 55 millimeters. Right there. So that point there is a point they're calling P. Now I'm just going to call that P1, okay, because we're in the X1, Y1 view. So that point right there is P. Now, what they want us to do, part one, draw the plan elevation of the line D to P. So I want to draw the plan elevation of that line. So if I'm to bring it back to my plan, it's simply a case of working backwards through my views. So P is on the edge BD. or BC, I should say. And that there is the point P in plan. Now, I have to connect that to D, because that's the line they want us to do. So I'm going to put this in in green now. So this is the line connecting from D to P. Okay, there is the plan view of the line. Now I'm going to draw in the elevation view of the line. So, work from the plan, back up, need to find P in elevation, so that's on the edge from B to C. Once again, just label as I go, there's P in elevation, and that's the line D to P. And that's what that line looks like like an elevation. Okay, so we've done the first part of question C. It's just a case of reading the information and then applying it. Draw the plan and elevation of the line DP. We've done that. And part two, determine and indicate the true length of DP. Okay, so they want us to get the true length of the line DP. Now, there's two ways we could do this. Um, we could li literally just look perpendicular, set up an auxiliary view looking perpendicular to the line DP in the plan view or elevation and take my distances from the elevation. But there is the principle of a cone whereby we rotate it and treat it like the apex of a cone. 
So if I take, doesn't really matter which one, I'm going to take P as the apex of a cone. Okay, imagine that this was the top point of a cone and D obviously was on the ground. Okay, and we rotate around till we're looking perpendicular to it. So in the plan view, how would that look? Well, when we look down top of a cone, we see a circle. So I'm going to rotate from D to P or P to D, I should say. And rotate that down, and it's like I'm rotating D until it's in a new position. So I'm going to zoom in here so we can see this a bit better. So I'm rotating it until I'm looking perpendicular to it. Now, D has simply rotated around, okay, until I have it parallel with the XY line. This is technically the new position of D as I rotate it around. It's gone to here. Now, how do I find this new position in the elevation? Well, once I rotate it around, all that's going to happen is that in the elevation, all that's going to that appears as I rotate it around is D is going to move either left or right. And in this case, it's moved to the left. So this is the new position of D. Okay. And now we're going to draw in that line once again. And that there is the true length of the line. DP. It's like I rotated the line around. I'll draw it in and plan as well. Okay, simply rotate it around, but in the elevation, I'm getting the true length of that line. And it says here, determine, indicate the true length. So I'm going to measure that now. And for me, there it's saying, is it saying 65, maybe 66? As long as you're within a range of it. Okay, it's saying 65 millimeters for me. So I'm going to write that in. And DP. 65 millimeters. Okay, so that's the third part of the question done. Now we're going to move on to the last part of the question. Determine and indicate the true length of DP. We've done that. Last part of the question. Determine the true angle between the edges AB and BF. So what they're saying is, what is the true angle between the edges AB and BF? Um, the only way I can do that is by making a plane out of it, and I would have to see the true shape of that plane to see those edges. And the true angle between them. So look in here, the true angle between the edges A, B, and B, F. Okay, I think I'm actually going to have to make a plane. Okay, so essentially here, it's like where we have a plane. If we look at the elevation, imagine I had all these points connected A, B, F. Now we are trying to get the true angle between those two lines, A, B, and B, F. Uh, and in the plan view, it looks like this A, B, and B, F going this way. Um, and I said we're trying to make a plane. So if I imagine connecting A to F. Now, we need a true length on that plane to be able to see it then as an edge view and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go from A, I'm going to project a line parallel across, or say parallel, sorry, horizontally across, to hit the edge BF there. Okay? Because technically that line would be on a plane containing ABF. Okay, it's like I've just done a line horizontally across to find it. Okay, now that point there is on the edge B to F. I'm going to bring it down to my plan view. And then if we know it connects to A. That line there is a true length. Why is that line a true length? The reason that line is a true length is because that line is parallel in elevation. I'm sorry, uh, sorry, it's parallel to the XY line in elevation, therefore it's a true length in my plan. Now, if I look along that true length and set up another auxiliary view, okay, this auxiliary will be uh, will show the surface A B F as an edge view. Okay, and if we look perpendicular to that, we can then probably get the true angle between them. Okay, I think that's how it should work, or I may see the angle actually first. So I'm gonna set up an X1, Y1. This is just another auxiliary view. So it's like I'm starting over, or you could call it an X3Y3 actually in this case. So so I'm going to call it an X3Y3 in this case. And the points I'm going to project out are A, B, and F. Okay. 
Now, project from plan, take our heights from the elevation. So I'm going to take my height for A. A is up that height. Mark it out. B is up this height. Mark it out. Okay, and then F is up this height. Mark it out. Now, technically, I said, now it's hard to see them there, but they should all meet in a straight line. And this is going to be a true test you're actually and This is really hard to get 100% accurate. So good little hint I do here, okay? I found, let's say, the lowest point and the highest point. The highest point in this case, we'll say, is B. Okay, so we're now at B3. And the lowest point is F. And obviously, the height in the middle was A. So what I often do then is I connect the highest point to the lowest point. And we'll see what my actually, I'm out by about a millimeter there actually. So that's actually quite good. Just one millimeter, it's pretty close. But then what I do is, that has to be, see it was just here, but I'm gonna mark it there, and that there now is a tree. Okay, now what's helpful there is, I am now seeing, sorry, I'll zoom out there. I am now seeing that surface, A, B, F as an edge view. And what I'm going to do now is if I look perpendicular to it and take my distances from the previous X, Y line back, I will see the true, uh, the true angle between those two lines. Okay, so I'm going to set up another auxiliary. This auxiliary I'm going to do really close to it. Okay, this is obviously going to be an X4, Y4. You could have, I could have called this one previously an X1, Y1, but I'll just stick with the normal rules. So, projecting out B, projecting out A, and projecting out F. Okay, now the distances I'm going to take are from the previous X, Y line back. So, previous X, Y line back to B, mark it. X3, Y3 back to B. Mark it from B here, just about staying on the page. So, in this case, that would be B4. Okay, back to A. Hopefully, this stays on the page. If not, I'll have to keep the process. Yeah, you just about stay on the page, just need to extend my line out. And finally, F, this one is quite close. Mark it that one, and mark it out from the X4, Y4. And that one is F4, and I'm gonna say A4 here. Once I extend the line out, there we go. And simply connect those up. And what's helpful here now is it's like I'm seeing that surface ABF as a true shape. But more importantly, it's not actually a surface, it's just the lines, but I'm seeing the lines are the angle between the lines A, B, and B, F. And I'm seeing that true angle between them. Okay. So there I have it. There is the true angle. I'm just going to write it in there. True angle. Now, at this point, once again, you come along with your protractor and you would measure it. I'm going to be as neat as possible, as accurate as possible. And for me now there, it's saying 61.562, I'm going to say 61 degrees. Okay. So there you have it, folks. That there was the question um, B2 uh, from the 2023 Leaving Cert DCG paper based on the topic of intersecting planes. Part A, okay, setting up the elevation plan. We had to get the... Um, dihedral angle between surfaces. Part uh, C was getting the true length, so that was a little bit tricky identifying P. And then once you got that, it was a case of using it. You could have done an, aux or an auxiliary, but a little bit of a quicker method by using the principle of a cone. And then the part D, very similar to uh, we just created a plane up here, ABF, and we got a true length on that plane, and we seen the plane then as an edge view. 
and when we look perpendicular to the edge view, we will see the angle between those lines. Okay, very similar to kind of a dihedral angle. That's the question done there, folks. I hope you found it helpful. Okay.